Happy Monday, everyone. Motivation Monday, we're back. So, we got a good day today. We're talking about, um, and just, by the way, those of you that are perhaps new to watching this, um, you know, what I'm doing now is that it's every Monday, I discuss uh, one of the books that I've been reading, and now, the, you might ask me, well, why is the books that you're reading important? Well, what I, my goal, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, uh, these are all self-education type books and they're trying to learn, I'm trying to learn as much as I can to be as good as I can because my goal is to impact the world and change the world and um, this is the start. This is the start for me. This is my educational process and if it, some of you, you know, may, you may want to make a difference in your life and change your life and improve and, you know, make, make more money, uh, have a better love life, uh, have you know, be in better shape, uh, be healthier, whatever the case. All these things are different uh, tricks and habits and uh, things that you can do to positively impact your life. And what I found through reading a lot of these books is that there's so many, so many things that we just do wrong and it impacts us down the road. And so there, there are the things that you don't necessarily think about, but you know, I mean, like for example, you know that if you smoke cigarettes, eventually down the road you're going to get cancer and you're going to, it's going to kill you at a young age, right? So we all know that habit kills you. That's an obvious habit. But there's other things like simple things like drinking enough water, right? It's, it's a habit that most of us don't drink enough water so we're chronically dehydrated. But so today what I'm talking about, I have this, uh, this book that I really like. It's called Extreme Ownership. And this is by uh, Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. And I was just saying, so these guys are two SEALs, they're Navy SEALs. And they, uh, they say that uh, how U.S. Navy SEALs lead and win. How U.S. Navy SEALs lead and win. So this is a story written by two Navy SEAL uh, leaders. And I was just telling uh, one of my employees here that Man, to have a name like Jocko Willink and Leif Babin, you better be a badass. So these guys are badasses, and if you read about them, you know they led uh, our troops in uh, Iraq, and now they have since retired, and they are working in uh, subcontractors for the government as a, in leadership positions, and where they're. They're going to different uh, parts of the government to help train individuals on, on leadership and so, and, and ownership. And so they, they've kind of tried to cross this uh, bridge here to, to where the leadership uh, skills that they've taken from being Navy SEALs, they cross over into the business world and show that the same habits that have helped them be successful in the Navy SEALs have also helped them be successful in business and they believe that these same habits will help you and I be successful in pretty much everything in life. And, and it's, it's really, if you, once you start listening to these, you're gonna say, man, I knew that. But, you know, I read a lot of things that I already knew, but it's, it's a different thing when you hear it from someone that you trust and someone that you believe has your best interest in mind and that you believe will, has the right information. And so, I may or may not be that person for you, but the books that I'm reading, these are this is these are the people that I trust, and so the, typically people that write books are experts in their field. So what I do is I'll search for a subject that I'm interested in, and I find the experts in my field. So, for example, I've uh, recently been interested in improving my marriage. So I went out and I found a bu bunch of books on in, you know improving relationships. Um, I'm also interested in, in uh, longevity. I want to live to be 150 years old. That's my goal. So I went out and found a couple books on living to be over 100 and uh, what I need to do and, and uh, some interesting things. But let's stick to this book, Extreme Ownership. Now, the, the uh, author of this book, is, you know, both of these guys are, are Navy SEALs and you know, they've, they've worked really hard and they've led uh, hundreds and hundreds of soldiers over the years and Navy SEALs into all kinds of unbelievable situations that uh, you and I would, would not be comfortable in. But he talks about these simple habits that he does and things and ways that he makes decisions um, and helps to lead people. So they found that one person can actually only lead and oversee about 
and they said optimal was about four to six people. So how do the, how does the military lead and have you know a thousand troops that they take into battle? You know how does that work? I mean, is, so the point is, is it's not a single person. They have some ideas here. So extreme ownership, their first thing that they talk about is that you have to take responsibility for everything and you have to own your world so those of you that make excuses for things and and tell yourself why you know why you haven't achieved this why you haven't done that why you couldn't do, go to this place why you couldn't do this why you haven't gone on vacation why you haven't traveled maybe you've been talking about traveling for the past 10 years but you haven't done it so everything that you tell yourself all the reasons those are just excuses and you have to you have to see them that way and if you don't see them that way then you're going to continue making them and once you actually own and take responsibility for everything that you do you can start to change these things and you can start to make a difference and impact your life but you have to you have to you have to realize that it's you that affects everything in life and i had you know there's one author that uh, said that you know the world is simply a reflection of us and so our world my world my world is a reflection of what I do and your world is a reflection of what you do so and you find that um, you know I've, I've tried to mentor quite a few people over the years and um, I find these these people that are struggling in life financially um, they just they you know they don't have any luck it seems and they they struggle and everything in their life and you come to find that the habits and the things that they do it's, it's obvious why they're having problems. It's obvious why they struggle because the way that they act, it just reflects into their world. And the, the crap that they do on a day-to-day -day basis reflects on a crappy life that they live. So the choice is really, it's yours. So you need to take ownership of what you're doing and admit your failures. And that's the first step to, to uh, changing and, and improving things and stop blaming others. So it's not their fault that you showed up late. It's, it's why didn't you leave early? It's not um, your boss's fault that um, you know you're working hard. You chose to, to take a job. It's not uh, you know it's not your kid's fault that they're unhappy and screaming at stuff. You put them in the situation. You made it so that they didn't have the things that they wanted, and that's why they're unhappy. So. Once you accept that and you understand that it's my fault, I can fix it. I can fix me, right? I can fix myself. I can change myself, but it's a lot more difficult to change other people. So if you're a, if you're a leader, you're you're owner of a business, um, you uh, are managing people. As soon as you realize that any action that they take is a reflection of you. So for example. Um, if one of my employees shows up late to work that's simply a reflection of me that i didn't make the importance of showing up on time a priority uh, and i didn't set consequences to that so there's a leader has to take control of this and and make things happen you can't just expect things to happen and hope that things happen you have to make it happen so Take ownership, extreme ownership is what they call it. Uh, the next thing they talk about is there are no bad teams, only bad leaders. And there was this cool story that they talked about that they they were doing this, they call it Hell Week, and it's like five day training where they, they don't, they literally don't sleep at all for five days and they're training nonstop um, all the time. They call it Hell Week. And they were doing this race, he says, that, and, and they were, they had six guys on the team, one leader and five subordinates. And the race included a couple of things. They, one, they, had, they were on, this, on the beaches and they had a rubber boat, you know, like those big rubber boats. And you know, imagine one that would fit six people, so it's fairly large. And so they had to run that around a course. And so they had to go up and down sand dunes. And then, then they had to get out into the water and uh, paddle out, um, I don't know, a couple hundred yards, and then come back in and continue with the course. And so they talked about how there was one particular team that was winning everything. It was, you know, everything that they did, they were succeeding. And then there was one particular team that was failing at everything. It had come in last place on everything. 
And the interesting thing was the, the leader on the bad team, he was complaining and saying it's their fault, they didn't do this, I can't believe I got stuck with this team, it's terrible, if I had, if I had better uh, teammates I would succeed. And he basically, the leader, was blaming everything on his subordinates and saying it was their fault, they weren't doing what he was saying, uh, they didn't uh, you know, work hard enough, they weren't working as a team, so the whole team failed. Now, the leader that was winning every race, he was more in tune with his team and understood their issues, and so what they did was kind of was kind of cool. So they took the leader from the team that was winning every race and they swapped them with the team that was losing every race. So the only difference was the leaders. And sure enough, what do you think would happen, right? The team that was losing was now winning. And they showed the, the reason why is because they had this leader that now rallied them around each other, got them working together, and worked as a team, and then they succeeded. So this simple little uh, story is here to show you that it's not, you know, it's not the team's fault. For example, uh, in basketball, I'm a big basketball fan, NBA, when the, your team loses, what happens? Do they fire LeBron James? No, <laughs> they fire the coach, right? And, and that happens in football, it happens in basketball. I mean, it happens all over the place. It's never, it's not that it's never the, the players. The players have, they take responsibility for themselves. However, the success of the team falls on the coach, falls on the leader. Um, now, you know, some of the bigger players, they, they should be considered leaders as well, but ultimately everything falls under the head guy. Um, in my case here with my business, you know, everything that happens under this roof, it falls under my responsibility. Um, even if, you know, my employees blatantly does something, um, it's my fault for putting in them in the situation. It's my fault for perhaps hiring someone that wasn't, you know, qualified to do what we were asking them to do, or it's my fault that they weren't trained well enough to do the job that we were asking them to do. So, this is, these are the little things that you have, you have to take extreme ownership and and be a leader and take responsibility and and you take responsibility for winning and leading and do the things that need to be done and it's my responsibility or your responsibility to understand all the little things that need to be done because you got to realize that the team that's working in front of you their focus is on the job the leaders focus is on the whole picture and so and many times when you're stuck within it's hard to see the big picture so having a coach or having a leader that can show you the big picture and explain to you why you're doing what you're doing that's what it takes and so the next thing they talk about is the believe you must believe in your mission and you need to be able to as a leader you need to be able to explain to your subordinates what the reason why is so and I know we've I've discussed the book before about uh, trying to figure out your your why and the why we are doing things in life. And so when you when you figure out your why is, is why what motivates you to do whatever it is you want to achieve. If you understand the why, it makes everything easier. And so a lot of a lot of uh, employees they they don't understand the why of the business. They don't know they don't understand why. Uh, your business is doing what you're doing. So, for example, with our business, you know, why are we doing what we do? Uh, is you know, is our why, you know, because we, we do liposuction? No, that's that's what we do. That, but that's not why we do what we do. Why we do what we do is because in liposuction, in removing fat, we make people confident. So people pay because they want to be confident. They don't pay because they want their fat removed. They pay because they want the consequences of removing the fat. The, the benefits of removing your fat, which is makes you more confident, helps you fit into your clothes better, um, it, it makes mobility a lot easier, it makes you healthier. So these are the, the, the why, and so what are we doing? How We're changing these people's lives, and this is that's why I do these things. That's why I work so hard, because I want to change people's lives, and that our employees get it. And that's why, if you know, if you call our office, our customer service is impeccable, because we are here for you. We're here to change your life and we're to help you improve your confidence, help you fit into your clothes better, and that's our why. What's your why? And so you have to ask yourself, and it's not what you do. What you do is not is what you do. What your why you do it is your reasoning, your motivation, your, your drive, your passion, and, and that's what you have to figure it out. And 
if you're just showing up to work every day and you don't know why you're there, you're just you know, showing up for a paycheck, you're gonna hate life and eventually you're gonna be miserable. So figure out your why and you'll be a lot more successful. And for leaders, if you can explain and, uh, and get your team to understand why they're doing what they're doing, they will be much happier doing it, I promise you, if they understand why they're doing it. Um, try with your kids too. Um, if your kids understand why you want them to do something, they're probably more likely to do it. Um, in fact, I was just talking to my son. Uh, one of the, the other books I'm reading right now is um, the, the Hundred Year Life, and so it talks about living to be over 100. And uh, I was explaining to my boys why they need to brush their teeth. If they're planning on living 100 years, you, you better brush your teeth so you have teeth when you're older, right? You better eat a good diet so you you can, you know, eliminate some of the risks for heart disease, or diabetes, or cancer, uh, by just eating the right food. Everyone knows we should exercise, right? So once they understand why they're doing these things, it's, it all started to make sense to them. And so now when I, when I ask them to go out and do something, like, uh, you, know, like you know, going out and playing on their bike, you know, I can remind them of the why. You know, hey, you don't want it, you want to make sure you stay in shape and you're healthy and, and you live longer, right? You want to, you know, these, my kids, they, are, they already see the vision. They want to, they want to live to be 150 years old and, I, and I'm getting them worked up and they're all excited about it because they understand the why. And that's what you can do. You have to get your team hyped up on why you're doing what you're doing. And so <clears throat> the next step we want to talk about is, uh, is checking your ego. So ego, this is something that I have noticed over the years. Um, although I try my hardest to be humble, it's, it's hard and it's, the ego is something that gets in the way of everybody. <clears throat> and the way I've seen it in my personally is uh, when I get more confident and everything is going great, uh, you know, it seems like everything's perfect across the board, that confidence, it tends to blind me. And Honestly, it, it, I, I've actually gotten to the point where it's scary because whenever I feel like everything's going well, that's when things start to turn down and go downhill because I get overly confident in my situation and, and when you start thinking that nothing can happen, nothing can go wrong, everything's great, those are the times when you're blinded and you don't see the problems right in front of your face. And if you don't see the problems right in front of your face, they're might, more likely to occur. So that's the ego. You got to get over your ego. You got to realize that you're not always right. You can be wrong. And just because things are going good doesn't mean they're always going to be good. And so if, as long as you understand that mistakes can always be made, um, it, it, it kind of checks you and keeps you, um, you know, at, at arm's length in that you're going to make decisions based off of the centered person. So. And the ego is like you're high flying, nothing can go wrong. And, and when you're making decisions as if you can't go wrong, you're gonna make the wrong decisions. So you just have to recognize, and it's, it's okay to have ego, but it's, it's more important that you understand what it is and what it's doing to you and how you can make better decisions if you understand your ego. Um, the next chapter they talked about, uh, they call it cover and move. And obviously this is a military strategy. Um, but it's pointing out the fact that cooperation is key to success. And you know, I've found personally in my business that it's really, it's difficult, you know, we, we can only go so far with, with myself. I, you know, I, I've done everything for many years now and I've hired you know, a number of employees, but I need help to be able to do as much as I want to do. So, what I found as far as uh, an owner is that my skills now I need to translate into training others because if I can't train others to be as good as I am, then I'll never succeed and do everything that I want to do in life because I need to replicate myself and the only way to replicate yourself is to be able to um, educate others and uh, essentially lift them up into the position. and so. 
one person uses this, you want to train yourself out of your own position or train others out of your position. So, well, maybe I didn't say it right, but you understand the point here in that we're trying to train others to rise up and to take over our position, whatever that position is. And so I'm not necessarily looking to train someone to take over my business. However, um, I am looking to train someone into taking over responsibilities and tasks that I have. And over the years, I've been, you know, delegating is something that is, has been a challenge for me because, you know, with your ego, you feel like, you know, if you want it done right, you know, the old saying, if you want it done right, you do it yourself, which is, is, is true because you're the only one that knows how to do it right by your standards. Um, however, if you don't ever pass anything off, you're going to be limited to what you can do and everybody's limited by time and space um, so there's only so much that you can do so if we're able to uh, cooperate and communicate and bring others up and lift up others up it will help you to succeed and so that's how leaders succeed so if you can if you can lead hundreds of people thousands of people um, you can accomplish so much more than having a team of five and you'll see this with like, like Facebook, you know, they have thousands of employees and look what they've been able to accomplish. Uh, you know, Microsoft, uh, Apple, I mean, literally thousands and thousands of employees that they train and I mean, it blows my mind. I, mean, I struggle with, you know, five, six employees. And so I can't, I can't imagine having that many employees, but uh, this is the beginning for me. Uh, and I'm hoping to be able to grow and expand and, but it takes, I, I know that it takes training and the quicker that I can train people and get people up to speed, the quicker we're going to grow. So I'm, I'm definitely on that path and we're working towards this. So um, hopefully you guys will be seeing this change uh, right in front of your eyes, which would be awesome. Uh, next chapter we want to talk about is um, simplicity and simplifying uh, things down to their, every task down to its basic function. And you know, I've, I've kind of had this belief over the years, uh, very similar to this, I, I, I use different words, but, um, you know, I, I everything that I do, I feel like I, you have to make it dummy proof. And so, you have to realize that everyone that you're talking to, they may not know the same things that you know. So, if you try to, you know, like using big words, um, in, in medicine you see this all the time. You know, you go, you go to these, uh, you talk to doctors and it's like they're speaking a different language. Uh, you know, they use all these medical terminology. Maybe some people will be able to, you know, they understand some of the language, but it's so stupid. I, I don't get why these doctors, they talk to the patients in, in this language that they don't understand. And so they don't get it. And, they, and then they wonder why they don't, they wonder why they don't follow any of their directions and they can't get them to, to do anything. I mean, this, so, this is a simple, basic leadership technique break everything down into simple tasks. And so where it's so simple that anybody can do it. And if, and if you as a leader are able to break things down into those simple tasks, your staff, your employees, your followers are going to be able to do so much more because it's so simple. If you make it easy, it'll be easy. It's that, it's that simple. And so I do this in, in like, uh, for example, in advertising. You know, in the words that I use in advertising, it would be stupid for me to use these big medical terms that no one understands. You know, who gets it, right? So in advertising, you want to use simple words that everyone understands. And those are the, those are the you know, you ever see some of these uh, viral things that, that you know, they, they somehow they catch on and you're like, man, that was so simple. That's exactly why it's successful. You got to make things so simple, so simple that anybody could do it. You got to make it dummy proof. So the next thing I wanted to, I wanted to discuss here was uh, they discuss their next chapter prioritize and execute and they talk about you know never being overwhelmed with the situation and so you're talking about these guys that are in battle and you know, dealing with being shot out and you know gunshots whistling past their ear and to never be overwhelmed by the situation uh, you know that's pretty wild that they can do that um, however if they can do it, anybody can do it, right? I mean, if you can, if you can stay calm in the, in the, uh, like in, in the face of danger, in the face of life and death situations, if you can stay calm, that's that's amazing. That's what a leader is all about. Uh, in fact, I was here. I, I remember uh, someone was talking about Michael Jordan, and they said that you know he has ice in his veins, and he was like the eye of the storm. And when they described him as the eye of the storm. It was, it was like, if you can imagine the tornado 
everything's the winds flying around and so the wind on the outside goes around substantially faster than the eye so the eye in the middle is where the wind is, is at a standstill and so if you've ever seen the movie Twister, you may have a better visual of this, but uh, as the storm goes over, it's whipping and throwing everything around, and then at one point, it gets to the middle of the storm and it's quiet. So they have the eye of the storm where you look up and there's very little happening right in the middle. Now all the stuff is on the outskirts. And so they said Michael Jordan, no matter all this whirlwind, this crap going around him, this chaos, the fans throwing stuff and you know cheering or booing or whatever they're doing, uh, there's the situations where it's tied up with you know 0.8 seconds left on the clock and and Michael Jordan is calm, composed, relaxed, focused. And if you were in that state of mind at that time, that's when you're able to succeed. And that's why he was able to succeed because he was calm, composed, and he and he fell back on his training. He fell back on the things that he did every single day. He's the thousands of shots that he, that he took. He didn't think. They got him the ball and he executed. That's it. And you think that Michael Jordan's amazing, and he is, absolutely. But one of the reasons why he was able to execute so well is because he had this calm, this focus. Um, and, you know, they say Kobe Bryant has it. So, you know, all, many of the greats, um, Stephon Curry, and these are people that. You know, we describe as having ice in their veins. But the thing is, is that you can have that too. It's really, it's it's all in your mind. It's all your focus. Now, no one's saying this stuff is easy, but you can do it. You can practice at this stuff. You can practice to be better. And, and as soon as you you acknowledge and you recognize and you take ownership of that, you can control yourself. That's when you can start doing all these amazing things. It's, it's the people that they believe that life is just happening to them. They're like, I can't believe this is happening to me. I can't believe this situation. Or, you know, if you get, like, for example, uh, there's the people that, uh, you know, their jobs are, you know, nowadays the technology is changing so quickly and a lot of jobs are being taken over. Like, uh, imagine at a uh, fast food joint and now they have, um, what are they called? Those uh, kiosks that you can order your food from there, and they don't—you don't even need the, pe the people there anymore. So those jobs are going away. Let me get that. Sorry, one of my. So, you know, those jobs are going away. So it's—it's it's, if you don't change and you don't uh, be proactive, your jobs can disappear. But, you know this stuff's already happening it's in the news so if you're working at mcdonald's or burger king or whatever and you don't realize this and you don't see this coming in the future then you're just blind to reality you, know, you can't see the stuff right in front of you you need to listen to people you need your coach to tell you hey get your head out of your butt things are happening your job's going to be gone in a matter of time it's, it's only a matter of time so you got to focus and find something else look for something else so Next thing is uh, the plan. Planning is key. Most people don't plan. And you think you plan, but you don't. It's, it's not to the extent that you need to. You need to spend more time thinking. So if you're the type of person who feel like you're just waiting for the weekend or waiting to get off of work at five o'clock, you know, it's about five o'clock now. If you're just like chomping at your bit, trying to get out of, the, out of work and, and you're, you're headed home and you just can't wait to plop yourself on the couch and turn your brain off and watch TV for five hours. If you're that person, man, you're not a planner and you're never gonna succeed. You're gonna be stuck right where you are for the rest of your life. Nothing is gonna change. You're not gonna improve and it's gonna, it's gonna be a struggle. So the people that plan to succeed are the ones that do succeed. You know, they have the saying, uh, you either plan to succeed or you plan to fail. But either way, you're planning for something. So those that are not planning to, su to succeed, those are not who are not planning out their days, their weeks, their months. Those who don't set goals, planning for the future. If you're not planning for the future, then it's just going to happen to you. And, and trust me, if you're not choosing what happens to you, not good things are going to happen. <laughs> so don't be that person. Plan your life. You know, you have the opportunity now. To plan everything in your life and you know a lot of the, the habits that we're discussing here there's simple things that you can change your life you just change these habits you change the habits everything in your life will change it takes time don't expect these things to happen overnight but I promise you 
you make some of these changes and your life will change completely. Leading up and down the chain of command. This is a you know, concept, I've read a lot of leadership books and you don't have to be at the top to lead. And a lot of people think this, they're like, okay, when I, when I own my own business, then I'll be a leader. Or when I you know, make it to a certain level in my church, then I'll be a leader. Or when I get to this, when, I, when this happens, then I'll be a leader. No, you lead from the bottom to the top, everyone in between. You can, you, you can have leadership qualities. And I promise you, if you don't show leadership qualities at a lower level, you'll never rise up above that. So it's the leadership qualities that you sh show uh, when you're in the lower positions that get you promoted to those higher positions because your supervisor will see, well, geez, Jenny has been, she's been training all these people beneath her. She's helping rise people up. And now we have three people that do the same job as, as, it, as that she does and we don't need her anymore. So, but she's obviously amazing. Let's move her up. Get her into a different position where she has more responsibility, more function. Maybe she's got more people underneath her. Maybe you're a salesperson. And if you can lead by training the people beneath you and help them to be better, they, salespeople make a lot of money. Managers of salespeople that are responsible for all the people underneath them, they make a lot more money because they're responsible for a lot more sales. So don't think that you have to be at the top to be a leader. In the military, what they do is, as I was saying, that. You know, they, they found that you know, the optimal uh, direct people underneath you would be, you know, five to six, maybe even four to six. And that's optimal. So what happens when you have a bigger team? You have to have decentralized command, which means that you have to have subordinates that are in control of people beneath, below them. So say I'm at the, the top leader. And then I have my office manager, which leads uh, the employees beneath me. And but as we grow, you get a bigger organization. You know, you're going to have multiple leaders that have people underneath them. And so you can't, you know, one person can't be expected to lead thousands. You have to have people underneath there, underneath you. But it's important that those people underneath you know their limits of command and what they are responsible for, who they're responsible for, and who they're reporting to as well. Because if, if the subordinate commanders are not reporting to the, uh, the people above them, then there's a break in communication and, and you're not going to be able to succeed with that. Uh, being decisiveness amid uncertainty. So this is one of those things that, you know, obviously you're never going to be 100% sure about anything. Now, there's a lot of people that they struggle in making decisions and you know, I get it. Not everybody can make decisions. Um, and that's why, you know, the leaders are typically the ones that are the people that can make decisions. And there's very few leaders in our, in our world, really. Um, so you have to be able to make decisions and take action on these decisions and be decisive. And so sometimes you make this with li limited information. And you kind of have to have an understanding and a gut feeling and a but you also have to be confident in yourself and confident in knowing that, you know what, this is a decision that I'm making. It's not a 100% decision. I'm not 100% sure. And if I'm wrong, this is what I'm gonna do. And so if you have backup plans, um, uh, alternate uh, plans here, and in case shit happens plans, uh, I mean, these are the, this is the way that you, you can be more certain. So if you, you know, you're never 100% sure. So you gotta think of the, the alternate routes, the alternate things that you can do if things don't work out that way. And if you understand that and you have plans, then you could be much more decisive in making the decision. So we're doing this. Maybe it's not going to succeed, but we're doing it now. We're going to go 100%. And if things don't work out, we're going to we have these alternatives that we can do. Then you can feel a lot more confident in, in making decisions that way. Now, this is a, a cool thing that uh, the uh, authors of this book state in that their main quote is discipline equals freedom and what they mean by this is is the discipline to follow these things the discipline to to follow your habits on a daily basis and to do these things every single day not just once in a while you can't just do these things once in a while this the consistency it won't work uh, so 
Discipline is freedom. If you want to have freedom in your life, and you know, a lot of people think freedom is like laying on the couch and being on a you know, white sand beach. And you'll never get there unless you take care of this shit every day. So you have to be disciplined in your life. You have to be disciplined to do the little things because everything matters. I'm telling you, everything matters. Eating that cookie, it matters. Smoking that cigarette, it matters. It makes a difference in your life. It affects the people around you. The things that you say, the words that come out of your mouth, it all matters. And, and you know, we, we, I think we tell ourselves that these things don't matter, that it's not gonna make a difference. Oh, one cigarette is not gonna make a difference. One drink is not gonna make a difference. It matters. It, it just, it does. And when you uh, succumb to these negative things in your life, it's gonna affect you somewhere. You may not know where, you may not know how, but it affects you. So I, I started this in, you know, about three years ago when I decided, you know, what if everything, what if I eliminated all my negative habits and added on uh, new positive habits? What if I did everything right? All the things that I'm supposed to do, what's gonna happen? And it's been incredible, first of all. Um, my confidence has gone through the roof. Um, which I didn't have a lack of confidence before, but now it's it's more so that I believe that I was meant to do great things. I believe that I can do great things. And I believe that I have the information and the knowledge to help train other people to make them great as well. And if I can help others be great, then we can all work as a team. And we can all be great together. And we can accomplish amazing things. And so, in doing all these things the right way, I mean, I'm healthier. I have a better relationship with my family. I, uh, I'm in a significantly better shape. Uh, I'm able to do all the physical activities that I want to do. Um, then at work, I, I can't tell you how much I've changed in the last year and how much our business has improved and gotten better. And, and man, all the fine details of business, if you deal with us now, you'll see there's so many details. And our business is so complex because what we offer is so amazing. The service that we offer to our patients, the fact that all of our employees are well-trained and can answer almost any question that a patient would have. And, and let me tell you the benefits of that. Have you ever called an office and uh, you know you ask them a question and the person answering the receptionist is she's obviously is like brain dead. She doesn't know what she's talking about. She has no answers or she gives you a retarded answer that doesn't make any sense and it just frustrates the heck out of you and you're and you're like I gotta call back and wait for someone else or or you know I gotta go do research online and like why can't that person just tell me the right answer? They work there. This is what they do for a living. They should know, right? Well, we've eliminated it. All of our employees are well trained. They can answer pretty much any question. I mean, we, and the cool thing is that we do this every day and we answer the same questions over and over. Um, but I've been able to train these people very well and we've got a great team right now. Uh, but our service is leaps and bounds above everyone else because of the details that we put into this. We've done, we've done this so many times that we know what patients want. We know uh, what problems they're going to have afterwards and we try to solve those problems before they even happen. So we go through the legwork to try and make this as easy as possible. So we break it down into the into the smallest little tasks here to make this whole process as easy as possible for you. So most of our patients are coming from out of state. Why do they come from out of state? Because we make it so easy. We make it easy. You can do your consultations over the phone. You can place your deposit over the phone. All you have to do is get out here. When you get out here, we've got a hotel set up for you. They'll pick you up from the airport, transport you to and from our office, get your medications at the pharmacy. It's so simple. All you have to do is show up. You show up and we take care of you. So discipline is freedom. Doing the little things. The little things is what's gonna change your life. And when you're ready, I mean, you know, one of these days you're going to be watching these videos and be like, this stuff really makes sense to me and I'm going to do it. And, but the reality is, are you going to do it? Are you going to have the discipline to do these habits on a daily basis? 
Uh, I mean, uh, simple things. I mean, we're talking about little things. If you can't do little things, you're not going to be able to do big things. So, like drinking enough water. Do you, are you disciplined to drink enough water every day? Most of us aren't, so we're chronically dehydrated. That affects every aspect of your life. You can't think properly without enough water in your body. Your metabolism doesn't work well without enough water in your body. You know, your blood is like almost all water. So if you don't have enough water in your body, your blood's not working appropriately. It's thicker. Your, your heart's pushing harder to get this thick blood through your, through your veins. And that's, it affects your heart. I mean, there's so many reasons why you should drink water more often, and most people just don't. So there's so many reasons to do these things here, all these habits. And you see how these people have had success. And it, you know, stop looking at the other people that have success and, and think it's, it's unique to them. It's not, and, and I'm telling you, there have been so many more millionaires recently in the last few years than any other time in history. Now, obviously, with inflation, it's gonna be easier to become a millionaire. However, it's happening more and more often. People are learning that you don't have to work for someone else, and nowadays with the internet, you can have your own job, I mean, your own business, and you can make a fortune. A fortune, because now you can say, you know, in the past you would say, like, say you would have a, a shoe shop and you're selling your shoes uh, right on the corner over here and you know you're gonna be limited by the people that go by your by the street so that shoe shoe shop is gonna be very limited on how many clients they can have but nowadays you can put your shop online and have exposure to worldwide I mean literally worldwide that same shoe store could be selling shoes in China I mean anywhere anywhere in the world so now your small group of, of potential clients has expanded to exponential. And so because of that, you have exponential potential, uh, exponential uh, possibilities for income growth. I mean, imagine if you sold 100 shoes a day and you made, you know, I don't know, a couple thousand dollars profit off of that. But then if you sold online, you could potentially be selling thousands and thousands of shoes a day. And that's not really that much when you think about there's, you know, 400 million people in the United States, billions of people worldwide, a couple thousand shoes is nothing. I mean, that's why you're seeing these companies like Google, like Apple, um, Facebook. I mean, they are just exploding. I mean, unbelievable growth the way these companies are and how big they're getting. I mean, Facebook has a billion people signed up. I mean, that's insane. That's why they're worth, you know, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars. So, extreme ownership. Take responsibility for your life. Be disciplined to do the things that you know you're supposed to be doing. Make things simple. You gotta believe in yourself. Know your why. Why are you doing things? So, I hope you guys enjoyed the talk today. Uh, if you guys are interested in looking, um, I, I do this every Monday. We have all the archived uh, videos we keep on YouTube, and you can probably also find them on our Facebook page as well. Um, if you're interested in liposuction, obviously that's what I do for a living. Um, we do offer free consultations. Um, you can give us a call at the office, 702-818-5476. Check out our website, myshapelipo.com. Um, if you're interested in free liposuction, we have our contest really easy to enter you simply just text the number um, you're going to text the word free lipo with no spaces to 44222 that's free lipo with no spaces to 44222 so get your consultations if you're interested in uh, changing your life through liposuction sign up for the free contest check out our videos for a motivation monday and uh, I hope you guys gained a lot of insight from this information. I hope you guys are ready to change your life. I want to see, you know, who's going to start leaving comments that they're actually doing these things. I'm changing my life and you guys get to see this right in front of your eyes. And I'm doing all the work here, reading all these books and, and I'm extracting the information, extracting the lessons and giving them to you. I'm just giving it to you. You don't have to do the work. I'm just giving it to you. So be disciplined to put this stuff into action. It's not difficult, it's simple. We're keeping everything simple and making it easy for you. Take these little steps each day. Live by these rules. Th if you think about these things, you're more likely to make decisions. So think about the stuff, write it down. Write, write down what you wanna do. Make your goals. Live better. Health, wealth, love and happiness, that's what we're looking for. You can do this with simple daily habits. 
keep watching for the future. We got more awesome books ahead ahead to uh, learn about. Um, please leave comments. Share if you find uh, that these videos are very useful. Please share them with your friends. You can, you know, tag your friends in the comments. Uh, that's an easy way to do it, or share publicly on your uh, Facebook channel. Um, I do appreciate all this. Uh, I wouldn't be doing this unless you guys are watching. So please uh, keep watching and keep sharing and help me spread the word. Uh, thanks again, and we'll talk to you guys next time.